Hello and welcome to the Lit Festival 2020. My name is Izzy, I'm the chairperson of the Lit Committee for this year and I want to welcome you to our fourth year of our festival. We're kicking off this evening with a committee video and three different interviews from three different authors. I would like to start by saying thank you to everybody. I would like to say thank you to Water Free Youth Arts for facilitating us and supporting us through the year. I would also like to say thank you to our old facilitator, Emer Chasty, who was involved in the lift for three years. Thank you to the Arts Council Ireland for support, money and grants. And thank you to Laureate Nanog and Kids Book Ireland for putting us in touch with the new Laureate Nanog of this year, who's hosting a school's online event. I would also like to say thanks to Fela Alina Pekog down in Dungarvan for putting us in contact with one of our facilitators for the workshops, Misha Kira. I would also like to say a big congratulations to our committee for this year. The committee is made up of all young people aged 13 to 19 years. They've pulled Trojan work in this year to bring this festival to you. So well done and congratulations to everybody involved. I hope to see you throughout this weekend at our festival. All the workshops are free and it's all online. We have an open mic on Saturday night, an Instagram live band playing Saturday evening as well. You can find everything on our website at www.thelit.eu or on our social medias at The Lit Festival. Thank you so much and stay lit. still growing and showing off your pipes to your friends? I hope so. It's only been two years, but I still hear all of our war stories from before. It's mad, isn't it? How people grow apart. I see you in town around my old friends, pretending that I don't see you, but I do. I miss you. I was close to you in a way that never felt mistaken for a romance. We'd smoke, dance, laugh in a heap of grass. The pigs never had a chance on our comedic acts. I walked past your granddad's actually. Funny how I remember where your granddad lives. I was there when she broke your heart. Played darts to forget the parts where you said I love you and we'd share a joint too. People told me that you went sober over all your money. Funny, I didn't believe it. You broke your bones for that business. Your mental well-being or an illness never stopped your fascinating willingness. You never stopped. Sometimes I'm tempted to text you. Whether it's a quick hello or a deal over the phone or a jade to smoke on the road and you'd probably respond and, well, I don't know if you give it to me for free. <laughs> Guess I'll just have to text you to find out, huh? Before, the sky was musty, mute, in need of a deep breath so deep it will push out all the toxic fumes, toxic air and toxic colours out. Hopeless. The seas and rivers were dirty, not taken care of, infused with waste and used more than the ancient baths in Rome. Hopeless. The people used to have their heads filled with unnecessary bits and bobs, focusing on things not worthy of being focused on. Crammed. Begging for some free time and space. Hopeless. Nature was crammed into certain areas, getting smaller and smaller each and every day. Tense. Animals and plants alike not being able to grow, live and produce. Hopeless. Humans stayed inside, allowing thing, things to change. After. The sky was brighter, rain is fresh and hydrating. It is singing loudly and freely as it sprouts new and vivid colours. The seas and rivers are now alive. Mother Nature is looking down at them with hope, cherishing the new and old gifts that return. The people's minds are now clearer, after stepping back and realising what is important. Family, friends and loved ones. No, their minds are not empty, but producing new ideas and differently. And now nature is free, 
everywhere, growing, producing, making new homes and settling. All this change has happened and is happening because we had hope. So up my seams, fill me with fluff. I'm a cuddly friend, you love me so much. I need to get a bigger sewing machine to pierce a larger hole in myself. Grab the scissors and watch the dreams cascade. Call it the puddles and I have no worries. I'm all gone, I've torn all over. My body joins a sea of strings and I've been thrown away with nowhere to go, evermore. Shattered. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It's okay. Everything's gonna stay the same. We're gonna be friends. We're gonna be fine. Just another little scratch on the glass. But it's not true. Your words shattered the glass. You acted like it was fine. You meant none of it. And now my heart breaks and my eyes water when I see you because I can't even look at you without seeing the mess you made for me to clean up. And if I had the right mind, I'd throw it back at you. And don't get me wrong, I'll try and rebuild it. I'll pick up the pieces, delicate and light, seamlessly glue them back together, so nobody could ever tell you've broken it before. Nobody could tell that this isn't the first time you've shattered it. So I'm putting away the glass for now. Because something so beautiful doesn't deserve such tragedy. And the faster you learn that, the better. Sunny California, 1977. Platform sandals, dark denim flares, windows down as Abba Blairs. A green cut crease with a big white wing, having hair like Fawcett was the next best thing. Newcomers like Fisher and Ford ruled the screens as people ranted and raved about the famous Star Wars teams. Bands like ELO dominated the radio, but Sonny and Cher were still taking it slow with Baby Don't Go. Seven years since the Beatles have split, now Fleetwood Mac are falling to bits. That was the summer of 1977. The place I long to be. Hope came and sat down beside me today. She perched timidly next to me and held out her hand as if to say hello. Yet I recoiled. Go away. How can you show your face here when I was kicked like a dog? How can you be so welcome and yet you shun me away? How dare you show your presence even when I was in pain? My words spouting out like hot venom, ricocheting off of Hope's soft face. She looked at me. I ran away. Maybe until another day. Ambition by Izzy Tiernan. I can't explain to you what wanting feels like. You may say that it's a burning, a yearning, somewhere between your ribs and spine. It may be a tug behind your eyes because when you were a child, you would cry until you got what you wanted. For me, there is never pity. Don't feel sorry, I never grew to want it anyway, and for that I am glad. No, if we wanted something from as soon as we were walking, we were working. Run a lap of the garden for a treat, sing a little song for a kiss on the cheek. Behave myself, be the best I can be. I might receive praise from my ma'am, the only goddess we were ever taught to know. So when I began to grow, that ambition rose with me, a faceless religion using me as a home. But I did not know how strong it had become until I was 13 and I wasn't the smartest kid in class anymore. That crumbling when I walked in the door with a B and not an A, Mammy, she said it was okay, but it wasn't about her anymore. I was not her child. I was a worker of wanting. I spent 
every minute seeking what would make me whole. This is why they say that wanting is a burning, because darling, did I burn. My fire reached for the heavens, but never high enough, and I pushed crescent moons cut into my palm from having white knuckles straight back, tight jaw control evermore, until my ashes were all that was left. Since then, I have regrown, changed but kept that burning inside of me. I don't think I could remove it, even if I wanted to. Because who would I be without the screaming and pleading, arguments and snarky comments, double-crossing, never stopping, I will be that glorious bastard if it kills me. I have my eyes set, heart heavy, or I may settle. In a tiny village in Kerry, I can feel the sea breeze and green hills calling me. But it will not please the hunger, the buzzing of the bees inside my brain, wanting to achieve. And I feel like screaming because like them, all I want to do is escape. The ladder that I will clamber, it is never ending. My hands are already aching to let go, to fall. But the bottom is so far and so daunting. Yet I felt its sweet embrace before, kissing my cheeks. So it is not the descent that terrifies me, only the long way back up. O oh, sweet ambition, you are the false god I worship. I lay my frail body on your pulpit, I cut my hair and burn it, because all I've wanted to be is sharp. All angles and angel I wanted to cut in my glares and speech and down my collar bones, I want to be glass. But for that, I would need to crystallise fast and I would be able to shatter. So perhaps what would be better is if I was bone, hard and pale, but not bend, but bone can break and flesh is weak, so me that will not keep. So how about stone? Cold and moving, I stand in my own way, but even the waves batter against me break. I will be a star. High up in the heavens, unmovable, untouchable, seen by all but known by none. O oh, hateful ambition, you are not the sibling I had hoped for. We grow together, but you abuse me constantly, telling me I have to be better. I do not know any better. I do not know any better. But I want to. Thank you.